Okay, hello, my beautiful people. Um, welcome to my channel and welcome back to my channel. Um, today, I have a, a very special guest with me. Um, it's an honor to have him here with me, um, both my brother and I would like to introduce you guys, uh, Dr. John Gray. Um, thank you so much for joining me on my channel. I am so excited and um, just to give the people a little bit of a background of who you are, um, you are the, he is the author of Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. Venus. Yeah, and um, and his latest version of that is the Beyond Mars and Venus. And Venus. Yeah. <laughs> he's a worldwide uh, author and speaker, and he's been known to work with everybody from Oprah to every magazine you can think of out there. And his books are published in, I don't know, over 40 languages and over a hundred different countries around the world. So, uh, you know, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Dr. John Gray. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Wow. It's fun talking to me. And, you know, before we started the interview, you were telling me how much it's touched your life. So I really appreciate hearing that. You know, I never get tired of it. I, I get just enough to feel like I'm making a difference in the world. So thank you. And oh. thanks for having me on the podcast. Happy to share these ideas. Awesome. Of course. Um, did you want to start off with your question? So is there something that you wanted to share with the world, considering, you know, everything that's going on right now with, uh, you know, the coronavirus and people being locked in? Uh, any words of wisdom to help bring a little more light and a little more clarity? Uh, with well, you know, this is a big problem. Okay, this is not an easy problem. There's not a few words that can solve this problem, but I can simplify down if people want to be committed to making the difference. Already we see in China where people were uh, in quarantine for um, isolation, quarantine for a couple months. Divorce rate now that they're out is off the chart. Okay, so when couples are together um, all the time, it creates a lot of problems. Right. So, and I'm going to talk about why that's so what we can do. Uh, second, yeah. uh, and, and I'll tell you, when you have children, if you're having tension between your partner and you, the children act it out. So your kids are going to be really hard to manage. And we can talk about some practical things for them too. Uh, but the most important thing is uh, for children, they need to focus on learning. That keeps them in a stable place when they're learning something. And for parents, they need to come back to love again and again. Because when they're not feeling love, they're feeling frustrated, they're feeling resentful, they're feeling uh, uh, suffocated by their partner. Uh, what happens is... It's, you know, they're trying to be good parents, trying to be loving and supportive, but they're pushing down all those frustrations, disappointments, worries and concerns, and they just become more. Whenever you push things down, it amplifies it, and then your children act it out. You yeah, know? you know, it's funny because the parents, I mean, the kids definitely absorb your, 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 the parents' energy, right? And you had a really interesting question uh, that I actually, that would really uh, touch on that. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you have it with you? Uh, yes. I have all my questions written down and Good. ready to go. <laughs> okay, well, I'll try to keep my answers short so we can get through your questions. Okay, yeah. perfect. So um, one of the first questions um, is if uh, you can tell us what are some, of, uh, some ways that people can heal from their past relationship uh, traumas so that they don't bring them into their current relationship. Okay, uh, I'm going to give you short answers, all right? Yeah. Uh, whenever you have a trauma, uh, we need to name the emotions. They, all traumas are stored in the more like monkey-like of our, our brain has uh, three parts. Instinct, then it has, and then it took about um, 4 million years, uh, 400 million years to develop most of our brain. And then in the last few million, we started to develop this prefrontal cortex. This is the only, this part, front part of the brain, right where I'm putting my hand on my forehead. And that part of the brain um, is a part of where we reflect on a behavior and say, well, if that doesn't work, I can stop it. I'll try something else. So let's say you want to lose weight and you go, oh, I shouldn't eat this particular food. For me, it's ice cream. Okay. I love ice cream. I'm like addicted to ice cream. Just love it, love it, love it. I get it. Give me ice cream. I'll go, 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 go. But for me, I'm 68 years old. I don't know what it is, but when I eat ice cream, it puts five pounds on me. And I'm not five pounds of ice cream. I don't know what happens. It causes my, my body to absorb water or something. But anyway, ice cream is off the limits for me. So I'll like gain a lot of weight from ice cream. And then I go, okay, I'm not going to do it again. Okay, that's this part of the brain going, don't do that. But then I see ice cream, suddenly this part of the brain, 
the monkey, they call it the monkey brain, okay? It's got the DNA of monkeys. We all are like monkeys, you know, it's part of who we are. That we call it automatic conditioning, unconscious behavior, instinctive behaviors. That part of the brain says, oh, we'll start tomorrow. We can get away with it this time. And now it becomes more powerful than the front part of the brain. Which is the, Except, the conscious aspect of our brain, right? Yeah, the conscious, a, a reflective, reflective. Where you're able to reflect. Yeah. You can evaluate, you can learn, you can grow. That's why I say with your kids, you always want to be learning something. Uh, and during this time, if people would take lots of courses, watch podcasts, do TED Talks, really don't watch the news so much. Some is okay, know what's going on, but then learn something. Whenever you're learning something, you're going to be in the front part of the brain. When you're not learning something, and that's not the only answer we're going to talk about today, but that's a key thing. You're going to go into fight or flight. The whole collective consciousness is in fear mode right now. And particularly you're a man, you're not making money. Well, then you're going to, the number one thing for men that allows them to feel good is to feel successful. And then with their wives, they can feel more successful. Okay. Look what I do in the world. That's how I build my self-esteem. Then what I do for her takes me higher. Well, a woman needs to have happiness. Then if her life makes her happy, then a man's job is not to make her happy. It's to make her happier then you're not needy. So we have to recognize all problems happen in relationships where we say, oh, I, I need more than you're giving me. And so we're dissatisfied. At those times, that's where we have to realize that if I have problems, it's not all my partner's fault. I have to look at my side of it. And if I want to change things, use this brain, how am I contributing to the problem and what can I do to change it? That's personal responsibility. That only happens in the front part of the brain. Anytime you're blaming your partner for your unhappiness, and that's an automatic reaction. Just like I want the ice cream, I'm, oh, a problem, it's your fault. We can always see somebody else's fault. The key to it is look, yeah, that's their fault, and look, how am I contributing to it? How am I making it a bigger deal than it is? Because see, when you make a big deal out of things, then the other person automatically makes a big deal out of it. This is something biological in our brain called mirror cells. If you are, if you're like right now, you guys are listening to me attentively, nodding your head. Oh, I feel really good. My brain is says, oh, you're really good people to interview me. Uh, you know, you're trusting me. I'm trusting you. But if you suddenly got angry with me, my mirror cells are going to get angry back. Well, I don't want to be here. See, mm -hmm. it's, it's automatic. Defensiveness is built in. We couldn't survive if we didn't know how to defend and copy. Copying is how we learn as children. When this brain develops, then we can improve. Then we can change. So whenever you feel threatened. Is that part then, of the reptilian brain? Yeah, it's called reptilian monkey, then prefrontal cortex is human. Is reptilian directly connected to your survival fear mechanism? That's exactly right. When, when, when survival mechanism is activated, you cannot think. You can only do what you're programmed to do as an animal. And that programming, a lot Perhaps of it comes. Beast. What is that? It, it, that? That reminds me of the biblical term of the beast, of the devil. You could say that. Well, that's the beast. We become unconscious. We, we, don't like a, we, we are unconscious. We are programmed into, when you're in survival mode, mm. fight or flight, blood flow stops to the human part of you. And you basically become uh, not so smart. You yeah. react according to how you saw your parents react. They react according to how their parents reacted. See, we're programmed as children by what we see what we do, you know, how do we learn to walk? You know, why do we crawl as children? Because we see our parents walking and we want to be like them. And crawling is actually our attempt to walk. And see, it has to actually develop the muscles so that we can finally upright ourselves mm -hmm. and go from being monkeys, which is this, to we can start being more human, mm -hmm. copying the humans and doing what they do. And we learn something really not very productive, very animal-like, which is that if I want more, I have to use negative emotions to get more. I either use anger to intimidate you and scare you. And that's an automatic reaction. We're not getting what we want. Some people are programmed to have anger. Other people are programmed to feel hurt. Oh, I'm suffering so much. You have to change. You hurt me so much. As if, you know, complaining to somebody how bad they are is going to cause them to change. Does it ever really work? No, because if you're complaining to a man, Mm. doesn't feel successful when men feel, this is a big difference between men and women 
everybody loves to be successful. But when you feel you're getting a message that I'm successful, your body makes the hormone testosterone. Men need to make 10 to 30 times more testosterone to have well-being. If a man doesn't feel successful, then right now in COVID, isolating your home, normally you go to work to feel like I make a difference. I'm, you know, now what difference do I make? You're looking to your wife to be the sole source of your fulfillment. And nobody can be the sole source. You have to do things beyond your family to feel good about yourself. Then you're ready to be in a relationship. But now that's taken away. Your work is a major testosterone producer. Now for women, intimacy is a major estrogen producer. Now estrogen, personal relationships, not necessarily making a difference, but interacting in a loving, caring, fair, uh, considerate way and communicating, all that is more personal. That stimulates estrogen. And women need 10 times more estrogen than men. Otherwise, they'll experience a cortisol response, an adrenaline response. Those are the stress hormones. And that then causes her brain up here to turn off. And now she's a monkey. And when she's a monkey, the way you get attention if you're a monkey is you get angry, or you cry, or you yell, or you feel afraid, your brain goes into worrying, what about this, what about this, it becomes hyperactive, or you feel really bad, oh, I feel so bad, now you'll love me again, I feel punished, I feel loved again. Think about the programming we get as children, which is if you do something wrong, now you have to suffer, I'm gonna punish you, and you have to suffer, and then after the punishment is over, I love you again. So if you suffer, I deserve love. This is our whole world. If I suffer, I deserve love. <laughs> As opposed to, if, I always deserve love, but we need right. role models to teach us how to behave in a way that's human as opposed to these monkey manipulations that are automatic if you don't have blood flow to the front part of the brain. But what pushes you into fight or flight is you could be using the front part of your brain and what you're doing isn't working because nobody taught you what works. Right. And so when it doesn't work, you go into fight or flight. What's well, not working? I lose confidence. I can't trust what's going wrong. You go into flight or flight response. Then you continue to do the automatic reactions, which cause the relationship to get worse. So, so, it, so it's a ahead. very interesting thing to, to almost think of like doing, uh, going back into your more front part, think of things that are more empowering to you as a human being right? Like things that create more clarity, more joy, more uh, solutions, right? To, to a situation, especially under stress. Yes. Yes. That's, a, that's why right now, one of the most important things people can be doing in the home, and I'm going to get into the male female thing in a minute, because it's a big difference, yeah. but everybody, your children and you as well, if you're learning something new, it stimulates the prefrontal cortex and that takes you out of the fight or flight response learning something new. And we have all this time now to be on the internet, to take classes, to get information, to read books. Most people don't read books anymore, but that's a big dopamine, uh, prefrontal cortex stimulator is to read things. Uh, watching TV for entertainment uh, gives pleasure, but it doesn't necessarily take you out of fight or flight, just to know. It's mm -hmm. passive. You're not actually learning something, unless it's educational, like a documentary. The news is good, but too much is not good. Uh, it's sensational. It overstimulates you. You're like addicted to it. That becomes a drug. There's two major drugs online. One is dangerous news. Oh, sensational, new, reveal, test, what this, this. The brain goes to excitement, new and different. And the Bad other- People is, dying. Oh my God. Oh, oh, people are dying. Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. all on alert. This is, and the brain gets addicted to seeing that. Mm -hmm. That causes high stimulation in the brain of pleasure. It gets pleasure out. It's dopamine, the brain chemical. Dopamine gives you pleasure. And anything which is dangerous or new, it stimulates dopamine. Other things, sugar does as well. There's various things, but danger or newness and sex all stimulate higher levels of dopamine. Well, when you have higher levels than normal dopamine, it desensitizes your brain. So normal stimulation is boring. So you feel bored, you feel apathetic. And so your hormones start going out of balance because you don't feel good because you desensitize the dopamine stimulate the dopamine neurons in your brain. So you don't want to do things that are too exciting. And if you do, that's okay a little bit. Then you want to do things that are relaxing, it give you a chance for your brain to adjust and come back. Think of it like the pupils in your eye. If you're looking directly into at the sun, your pupils shrink. 
and then you go into a dark room, they'll open back up again and you can see again. Mm. Go out in the sun, high stimulation, they shrink. So then suddenly if you have high stimulation, they shrink. You go into a dark room, you can't see anything. It's boring, flat. But then adjusting to it, your pupils will open and then you'll see things. Mm. So we have to alternate high intensity with low intensity and ways to do that, a whole bunch of ways to do that. But now we want to talk about men and women. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. men, remember I mentioned men need to feel successful. Well, success does is build testosterone, increases it right away. I did a good job. Look what I did. Look at the result I produced. He's not producing those results. So his testosterone goes down. What are the symptoms of low testosterone in men? Boredom, lack of motivation, mm. irritability, mm. Uh, impatience, yeah. rigidity, and anger and argumentative and too many emotions, and eventually neediness, nothing is good enough. So that's what happens to men. And so a man's out of work, he's gonna go down. What can he do to raise his testosterone if he doesn't have a job or he's stuck in the house? And right. what can she do to help raise his testosterone? We'll cover that, but first, what do women need? They don't need testosterone, they only need a little. Men need 30 times more than a woman. She needs testosterone, but he needs way more. What does she need? Estrogen and progesterone, two very important female hormones for a woman's well-being. Now, when a woman is premenopausal, when she's before the age of menopause, she's having her period regularly. After her period, her estrogen levels have to slowly increase, increase, increase for five days. Then for the next five days, they need to double. They need to go even higher. If they don't, she will not experience well-being. She'll feel distress. She'll feel I'm not getting the support I need. And that will put her in a fight or flight mode. And in that mode, the brain only looks at what's wrong. Okay, if you're in danger, you look at what's wrong. Well, you become hyper vigilant to see the negative rather than hyper vigilant to see the positive, which is what happens when you fall in love. When you fall in love, you're hyper vigilant. Just look at what's good. Okay, when you're in fight or flight, you, you go hyper vigilant and you only see the negative. So everything makes you unhappy, you're dissatisfied and so forth. Now what makes, what raises estrogen is when you feel I can get what I need. After and I need, I have to feel I need. And then you feel love, you feel happiness, you feel intimacy, you're giving freely of yourself because you're getting what you need to stimulate your estrogen. So when women are unhappy, always, their estrogen levels are too low for that time of the month. After she ovulates or hits the point of ovulation, now estrogen is the secondary hormone. Progesterone is the dominant one. Progesterone is to do stress-free activities that you enjoy. That's it. I'm doing what I enjoy doing. And it's not so much depending on someone, it's depending more on yourself, but doing what you enjoy as opposed to doing what you have to do. Now I know life, we have to do stuff, mm -hmm. but that produces testosterone. Just watch your mind when you're unhappy. If you're a woman, your mind is generally filled with, I don't have enough support, that's the estrogen side, or I have too much to do, have to do, have to do. I can't do what I like to do, what I enjoy doing. Too much so testosterone. That's how hormones go out of balance for women, because whenever you have to do something, your testosterone levels as a woman will go up that doesn't lower your stress. Testosterone's okay, as long as you're also making enough progesterone and enough estrogen. But when you make testosterone, you actually make it out of progesterone. So always women will be a little bit low in progesterone if they're making so much testosterone. And for estrogen to get produced, they need to feel, I depend on someone for something meaningful or significant. And for the double, that's where you need to feel, I really need someone and where are they? So that's where couples will get in big arguments, okay? Mm -hmm. Because her body is saying to be happy, I need more estrogen, which means I depend on you, I need more from you. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not getting what I need, I'm very unhappy. And then if she doesn't get that happiness, if it doesn't double, then the body is thinking, I missed it, I missed it. And now for the next 10 days, she's going, I missed my estrogen, I need my estrogen, he's not there for me as opposed to it's like, I need to eat a meal and I'm satisfied. But if you don't get that meal for the next six hours, you're like, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. So women will be out of balance if they don't get that estrogen hit, to hit the bell, so to speak, that they need. And mm -hmm. then they're satisfied. 
then the estrogen can go down and their progesterone goes up. Mm -hmm. Progesterone is I enjoy my life. I do things I enjoy. I like what I do. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have enough estrogen to start with, then you keep looking for more intimacy from your partner as opposed to looking to yourself to do things that you enjoy doing. So women are complicated. Yeah. Men are complicated. (laughs) Men are complicated only because women are trying to figure us out and we're so different. We just don't make sense to them. So understanding these things, which, you know, I I talked about men are from Mars back in 30 years ago. Now I have beyond Mars and Venus, which brings in the hormonal side of it. Because what's happening today, I had to write this book because women are becoming like men. See, they don't need us. They go out and make money. What did my mother need my dad for? He needed him to be a gentleman, not too messy, not get angry, and make money. Mm. If, if a man did that, oh, she was a dream. Oh, my gosh, my husband, he did not a big mess. He makes money. I can buy things. I can do things. I feel safe because he never gets angry. As soon as men get angry, they, anger is too much estrogen, not enough testosterone. Only insecure men get angry. When you're confident, your testosterone's up. And this is so important. Because when a man is gloomy or irritable or grumpy, women try to get him to talk. That's the worst thing you can do. Mm-hmm. See, you think, because for you, if you're, groom, if you're grumpy and, un- and unhappy and whatever, if I say, hey, let's talk about what's going on inside of you. And of course, what you'll say is nothing, which means something's going on. Mm-hmm. If, if you ask a guy what's going on, he says nothing. Nothing is going on, really. <laughs> but for her... She just she's testing you to see if you're really interested. So you have to be persistent. You have to say, oh, what, what, what happened today? You know, what's going on? I can sense something. She goes, oh, he actually cares. Mm-hmm. But most guys don't know this. They say, hecky, what's the matter? She says, nothing. He says, oh, good. I can go watch TV. <laughs> it's <not me. laughs> so, so it's like understanding what we're really needing. And people don't know what the partner needs. And most of the time, we don't know what we need. Mm. Now, let me emphasize that. That's a really interesting point because sometimes people say, no, John Gray says I'm a woman. I need to talk about my feelings to produce estrogen. I don't need that. I don't have time for that. I don't want to do that. That's weakness. Yeah, mm. that's your reaction. That's the reaction that's causing you to be unhappy. And who am I to say you need something different? I can tell you you need something different because you're not happy. You're not able to fall in love. You're blaming all the time. You feel dissatisfied. That means you're doing something wrong. And you only do something wrong when you don't know the right way to do it. And you only don't seek out the right way when you're not in touch with, okay, I need this, how do I get it? I need this, how do I get it? So think about vitamins. We know if you don't have enough vitamin C, you'll get scurvy, okay? Your gums will start bleeding, your body will fall apart, it's a horrible disease, you'll die. Just because you're not eating oranges. Hmm. But that person who's not eating fruit They might be eating, they might feel like, oh, I want the ice cream. I'm eating ice cream every day. What's wrong with that? They don't need the ice cream, but they keep eating the ice cream. And they're not eating the fruit because nobody pointed out to them, you need to eat more oranges. Mm -hmm. And so they don't know what they need. Whenever people are sick, they don't know what they need because if they did, they would then find a way to get what they need. Mm -hmm. But we often don't understand. Some women do understand what they need, but they don't know how to get it. For example, what women need when they're stressed is more estrogen, generally speaking. Now, at those times when she needs more estrogen, she needs to feel, what do I need a man for? Well, it used to be easier because you could find a man with a job and then you didn't have to do all that work. (laughs) So you were very appreciative of him. Mm -hmm. But let's say you got your own job. What do you need a man for? You don't need a man. If you don't need a man, you can't make estrogen. Or if you don't need someone, you can't make estrogen. It's feeling I depend on you for something. That stimulates estrogen. When you feel like I don't need you, I can do it myself. Look what I can do. Look what I've done. Look what I can accomplish. Look how tough I am. That produces testosterone. That's why there's this big difference between men and women. Women, yeah. Go ahead, what you're saying. Yeah, in women. Yeah, I can see that. Especially nowadays, how much women are so like they're acting like men and they're so stressed and then they're they're and they're almost like almost yelling at you because you don't listen either and it's how can you listen to somebody who is not even paying attention to what's going on within themselves it's really confusing and and how can you listen to somebody who's so dissatisfied with their life yeah when the happiest thing you can experience is feeling i'm successful and if what i say doesn't make you happy why bother talking to you 
<laughs> what's the point of all this conversation if you're not looking for a solution what you can do differently but actually when you're a woman and you're stressed the first thing you need to do is not look for the solution except one solution which is I need to increase my estrogen and I need to share my feelings with somebody who can hear me and if my feelings are blaming that person I shouldn't share with them I should find somebody else to share with who will hear me because what you need most is not to change somebody you need to open your heart so often a woman will want to tell her partner oh you didn't do this you forgot this how could you do that why is she sharing those feelings she wants him to change she's dramatizing her upset to get him to listen because she wants him to change but if you blame a man if you dramatize he's only going to get defensive this is 400 million years of evolution attack me and I will attack back I will defend till I die I will become rigid and justify I will blame back I will complain back we suddenly become a whole different animal when you complain to us or blame us or get mad at us share negative emotions about us so don't do that what do you need is to share your to feel good open your heart and feel at ease you don't have to change the outer world you have to change what your reaction to the outer world is yes you like a you like him to change nothing wrong with that you want him to do more for you how do you get him to do more for you you stop trying to change him inform him love him and then express what you like to say you know sometimes I'd appreciate this or would you do this here's an example of that because you know theory goes over people's head for years my wife Bonnie she used to say John you always leave the lights on you always leave the, I'm always following you around you you know it's bad for the environment now I can immediately argue with her in my head that doesn't work but inside I mean out, out loud would just be a big argument and but if I did argue when I did she says well why and she'd say oh what waste money it's bad it's not environmentally good you should turn out the lights okay so I solved that problem I have all what is it free energy <laughs> I have the solar so even still she said you're always leaving on the lights I have to turn them out I say why well the light bulbs will go out they're expensive and also we need to set an example for the world and be environmentally friendly and that's her value and I get that's her that's not so much my value although I value that but I solved that problem I'm using free energy anyway so I can always defend men will defend we use reason logic it doesn't work if a woman's upset so what she did is figure out how do I get him to turn out those lights because I really would appreciate that for years I did this annoyed her more and more and more finally she made a change she said she said to me oh John and I got my attention like a smiling voice she's John I said yeah you know I just want you to know I appreciate many many times you always turn out the lights but sometimes you forget and so I have to go around turning out lights and whatever I'd really like it if you try to remember thank you and then walk out of the room then he can sit there with oh you know she liked that I'm not in trouble as soon as you get upset with a guy he's in I'm in trouble fight or flight what did I do wrong how do I have to change I don't just, what do I have to do to get love I'm never gonna get late again all that happens inside of us yeah and if if you just learn how to always cushion a request without a complaint then a man will hear it best whenever you push at somebody they will push back that is the nature of the monkey inside if I push at my wife's emotions they will come more intense if I tell her you shouldn't be upset about that she's gonna become more upset about that if I laugh at her and say oh that's ridiculous now she'll make it more serious and she'll find more reasons to justify reactions that maybe are unwarranted even because when women are way on their male side naturally they want to go back to the female side it's a tr we're trying to find balance there's tendencies and but for many women today they feel oh if I'm emotional that not ne they're not necessarily logical I could be seen as crazy uh, they also they have needs I'll be seen as weak uh, I don't want to be weak I don't want to be too emotional I don't want to be look crazy my mother was kind of crazy you know <laughs> yeah. and, and and you feel a little crazy inside so you busy yourself you stay on your male side in order to not feel what you feel but it will build up and it shows up through dissatisfaction 
what happens when you suppress emotional tension, it creates adrenaline response. I can't share that. I can't share that. I will not be loved if I share that. He will not love me if I share that. He will see less of me if I share that. So that's an adrenaline response. That's fight or flight. Then blood flow goes to the emotional memory of all bad things. And now your brain only focuses on bad things. Your memory is how he didn't do this. He didn't do this. He didn't do this. And then she gets upset because he forgets stuff all the time. Women remember too much. Men forget too much because our reaction under stress is to forget all our problems. See, that's why men will say to you, don't worry about it. Forget it. Don't worry about it. Forget it. Not a big deal. It's still just let's watch TV, you know, or let's go have sex and forget it. Women can't forget it. They need to talk it out. But talking it out to him doesn't work if it's about him. He will always get defensive. You talk to somebody else, open your heart. Then you can come back and let him know what you need. And how do you do this? This is the million dollar phrase. Oh my God, my wife figured this one out. Changed our whole marriage. I was one time late three hours for dinner. Okay. And she was very angry with me. And I came home. She said, the food's in the refrigerator. I'm going to bed. And I decided to sleep on the couch that night. It was the anger was coming out of her like a big black cloud. Okay. So then, so then in the morning she woke me up and she said, John, you know, last night you were three hours late for dinner. This is not a big deal. I just need to tell you how I feel. It'll only take like maybe three or four minutes. As soon as she said, this is not a big deal. What's the reaction I have inside? Yeah. I'm not in trouble. I don't have to defend myself. I can relax and I can hear what she wants to tell me. Mm -hmm. Men don't hear it. They won't let it in. And why don't they let it in? Because it sounds like criticism to them. Even if you don't think you are criticism, it sounds like criticism. You know, tell them you shouldn't drive so fast. That's criticism. Mm -hmm. Anytime you want to help them, you shouldn't wear that tie. That's criticism. Now, maybe you think you're just helping. He hears it as criticism and he pushes it away. He resists. So, Typically, he relists. There's always exceptions. Uh, but after a while, he'll resent that you're controlling him. Uh, so now what happens? Yeah. Uh, you you know, some- I, 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 there was a question here that I that you had that you wrote down. That yes, I, yes. I want to go. I give you the long answers. Okay. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. uh, I, what do you think of this one right here? Knowing that men and women have different perspectives. Yeah. Okay. Um, so knowing that uh, men and women have a uh, you know, different perspectives in, in life and stuff. Um, how can a man and or a woman tell that they are in a uh, healthy or um, an, as opposed to a not healthy relationship? How can they tell if they're in a healthy one? Yeah, I live in a healthy relationship. I feel deeply loved. I come home, she feels safe. I'll give you an example of what my wife told me after 23 years in a 34 year marriage. After 23 years, she said, you know, John, I asked her for a rating. And what do you think of me as a husband? She said, as a father to our children, I can't imagine a better man. You're the best father ever. As a husband, you're not perfect. (laughs) (laughs) Then then she said, but you've given me the greatest gift a woman could want. I said, what was that? She said, I know that I can do things that upset you. And when you get upset, you go to your cave, you do some magic, you come out and you're more loving. I know there's nothing I can do to push you out of my life. Mm-hmm. And that's because I take 100% accountability. If there's a problem, if my heart closes, it's my fault, it's not hers. Now I can see what she did wrong very easily, but I also know I contributed to it. I am responsible for being a loving person. Mm-hmm. And if I'm not, I can't just blame it on her. And then I have to learn what can I do to help her find her loving self if she needs that help. And really you don't have to do much, men. You just have to not get in the way. You see, when women want to express themselves, we make you wrong, that's getting in the way. And so, but then there are things you can do that will help, like four hugs a day, like affection, like listening, like touching her hair. There's a big measure. If you touch a woman's hair, like petting a dog or cat, you touch, she will purr inside. Mm -hmm. Her body makes a hormone called oxytocin. Non-sexual touch Mm -hmm. makes oxytocin. Now, oxytocin makes her feel safe allows her testosterone to go down. She doesn't have to do everything herself. She feels support. That allows her estrogen to go up. When her estrogen goes up, then she begins to feel what she needs. And if she has good communication skills, then she can learn how to communicate those needs in a way that doesn't dramatize it and doesn't make him wrong. Not dramatizing it is before any complaint, 
before any request. Now, John, this isn't a big deal. What I'd really like is this. I'd really appreciate if you do that. And then walk out of the room. The reason you want to walk out of the room is give him time to take it in and reflect on it without somebody looking at him. Like, so are you going to do that? When are you going to do that? You know, you haven't done it 15 times. How many times do I have to ask you? All of that stuff. (laughs) Just give him some space. So when he does it, it's his gift to you rather than it's a should that he has to do. You know, a lot of, uh, I feel like there's a lot of confusion in relationships, especially, well, everybody, younger and older, that when they're so used to a certain quality of life, particularly negativity, and it, and it becomes unhealthy, they really can't, almost can't see it. Everybody else can probably see it, but they can't, especially if you're in. What are some things that you think uh, that could help bring out the individual to kind of reflect on and see, to be able to detail or uh, be aware that, oh my God, this is an unhealthy relationship and it, I'm, I'm contributing into it and we're both making this situation to what okay, a healthy A healthy relationship, back to that question, is the recognition that through this relationship, I'm growing in my ability to love. And that's what my wife basically saw, is that through this relationship, she was growing in her ability to trust me, that if I'm not always in a good mood, that I will always come back and love her and that she is safe. And men also, a good relationship, for a healthy relationship for a man is to learn in this relationship, I have the power to get what I need. Okay, I know how to get what I need. And how I get what I need is I, I'm 100% accountable for learning how can I contribute to her being unhappy with me? How can I contribute to her being happy? And that's all my books is based upon my, not blaming her, looking at why she's that way, what I can do to help her. And a big picture of this is, you know, people, when your hormones are out of balance, this is why I come back to hormones, we become too picky. We're just too picky. We're too demanding. We are so selfish. We're so self-centered. We're so demanding. It's the littlest things. See, I'm a marriage counselor 40 years. Mm-hmm. The problems people have, they're so, uh, the, you know, he said this, she did that. The stupidest things we make, we blow out of proportion. And that's what the monkey does. If you want to get more, you got to make a bigger problem. You got to amplify it. And then the other person amplifies, you know, I call it ping pong. She complains Then he's, oh, well, I have a complaint about you. And then she goes, yes, but you did that. And then we're always going to look for when we get in that negative place, our mind's going to go and focus on more negative things. So, you know, one thing we can learn at this time is also class people can take. There's many, many classes on this on how to meditate. Uh, if, if you, if you're religious, you can read the Bible, you can read spiritual books that inspire you. Mm-hmm. When you read things, it ins- you resonate with what you read. When you read, you resonate and that raises your vibration out of this monkey state. So mm-hmm. read books from wise people mm-hmm. and, uh, listen to people, wise people that you admire will actually, you resonate with that. Like right now, you're feeling really happy. We're all resonating together. We're on the level of learning and truth and love is possible. And you're listening to a guy who's created love and passion and great sex for, I'm 68 <laughs> years old. All my <laughs> male friends, they're all jealous. You know, I wait for an erection. They don't. <laughs> it's, uh, I, I have aliveness in me, but I know what made it happen. A healthy relationship is one where you're learning and growing and not feeling victimized, not seeing you your yourself, right? I mean, your body and your mind and yeah, take yeah, responsibility and, for it. And let me, let me say, you know, so many times men are seen as the bad guy. I always see both people as the, the not necessarily bad guy. We can put the black hat on them, whatever, or the white hat. No, it's always two people. There's a fire behind you. It takes two sticks rubbing together to create the spark. Maybe one person does it more, but we have a power to create our lives and we have to know how we're contributing to the problem. So here's an example where you say, oh, a woman, well, my husband, he was so mean. He said this, he said this, and he said this. He was so mad. And I said, okay, now tell me before he got mean, what was going on in the conversation? And she was basically complaining about something are not happy about something. He then responded to something and then she responded back and then she started to ask questions, interrogating, why would you say that? And why do you think that? And now she's getting him to talk more when he's getting angrier and angrier. And that's the mistake. Don't ask a man questions if he's upset. Take a time out. Take a time out and walk away. You know, one of the things that my wife is, is annoyed by me 
it's because I'm famous. Everybody wants to know my story. They always want to ask me questions. They want to get to know me. So we'll go to some public place and suddenly there's a crowd of people around me and she feels left out. She feels ignored and she says, oh, you dominate the conversation. You talk, you start teaching, you know, everybody's, everything's about you. And I say, yeah, but they like that, you know, and she says, yeah, but we're, you're not like relational. We should all talk equally, you know? Yeah. And so I said, look, honey, people keep asking me these questions. I'll try. Yeah. The way she trained me is I'd be at a little party, like 10, 15 people, and they're all centered around me. When I speak, everybody wants to listen. Yeah. So then what she does is with a smile on her face, she just gets up and walks out of the room. Huh. And then I, I get, oh, you know, I'm not bad. She said, he wants to do that. He can do that. I just don't like that. So she walked out of the room. So she'll get up and walk out. And immediately, we'll start asking other people questions and stop, stop teaching and giving my ideas because they're so interesting. They're out of the box stuff. Yeah. And then one question leads to another, to another, to another. Yeah. But I learned there's a social setting where you're not the teacher. You're not the center of attention. You want to give that to other people as well. And she taught me how to do that. Mm. And, and, you know, it's not like I feel deprived because I get to talk to you or I get to be the center of attention. I get to teach <laughs> seminars. I have thousands of people listening to me talk. Why do I have to do it all the time? Well, because yeah. you're fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but, there's a, but anyway, so that was a, another thing which I learned from her because she was able to give me that feedback without making me wrong. See, that's the whole thing, yeah. without making me wrong. So timing is very important as well. Mm -hmm. If you ask for something from your partner, make sure you're not angry at that time. You're not feeling hurt at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're feeling hurt and betrayed, those strong emotions are all coming from back here. The instinctive part of us is jealous, it's greedy, it's selfish, it's you should be this way, it's shaming, you should feel guilty. All of that stuff comes from ancestors. It comes, it's not who we can be today, which is forgiving, compassionate, empathetic, empowered, confident, self-sufficient, able to, when our partner's in a bad mood, I have a life, I can do things for myself. But the problem is, once we're isolated with COVID, with the virus, our normal life that normally gives us a lot of stimulation, even if you have a good relationship because you feel happy inside, so your relationship is to make your partner happier, okay? It's to share more with them, but you're basically centered inside. You're okay, you're good. Well, without the outer stimulation, you don't have that, and we depend upon that. So one of the things women can do to improve their estrogen hormones is recognize that if they're unhappy, they're gonna be blaming their partner. Don't, it doesn't work what they need to do is something to raise their estrogen. Singing raises estrogen. Singing, there's these online singing things. <laughs> In the music, dancing stimulates estrogen. Learning stimulates estrogen. Uh, taking a hot bath stimulates estrogen. Getting a massage, and I'm gonna teach you how to get a guy to give you a massage in a minute. Getting a massage, a non-sexual massage, uh, gives you huge amounts of estrogen. It's amazing what it does. And of course, being able to talk about your feelings. So call your girlfriends, use FaceTime, talk to them what you're feeling, what's going on. Learn to express your emotions with them. Then you feel heard. Then you can go back and give love to your partner and you'll be able to appreciate what they do. And then you'll be able to ask for them to do things for you. That's a real key. What women do is they think, oh, he should just do it. So you'd be there in the kitchen doing something and he's sitting there watching TV and you're going to start grunting and, uh, 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 and you think you're asking for help. If he loved me, he would come over. No, you have to say, honey, I'm really tired. Would you help me? I would love that. It would feel so good to me. You have to motivate him. You have to ask, but women feel I shouldn't have to ask. If he loves me, he'll automatically know. No, you have to ask. And then he has to respond and do something. Then when he does something, then your estrogen goes up. You need to feel he will deliver, he will do. And if you get enough estrogen, it's never have to be perfect. You know, <laughs> it, it just, he, he did his best and that's good enough. Acceptance, appreciation, trusting he'll do his best. But you, if you're not getting what you want, instead of like blaming him, go, okay, I need to adjust how I'm doing this. Understand the male psyche, how to get them, you know, to do more is a, is a, a, something I'm going to teach you in a minute. Whereas for men, how to get them to come back to their loving self. Don't fix them. Don't try to change them. Don't give them advice. Take time. The magic phrase there is to a woman, you say to her, she's talking, you say, okay, help me understand that better. <laughs> That's a million dollar phrase right there. Just, oh, help me understand that better. Tell me more. And then get her to talk. The more she can talk about her stressful emotions, 
the more her estrogen goes up, the safer she feels to emotionally undress. You see, that's what sharing feelings is. It's getting naked emotionally. And when you get really good at this, man, you actually get turned on when she shares her vulnerability. Because what are you doing when you listen? Most people think listening is some kind of female skill. Actually, women are terrible listeners, to be quite honest. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen them. As soon as the husband says one thing, they go, you're not listening to me. And they want to talk more. Well, they need to talk more. And they can't hear a word you say with appreciation mm -hmm. if they're stressed. They just can't let it in. So you, if you want her to hear what you say, you got to hear her first. That's because ladies first. Same thing with orgasm. Give her the orgasm before yours. Because if you orgasm, you're done. If she, and then she's not going to get the juice she needs. Then if you or give her an orgasm, she's basically masturbating. She's not feeding on your energy. Mm -hmm. Women need the male energy to provide them the juice to go higher and higher and higher. They need you and men need to be needed. Mm. Yeah, good. men need to be needed. That, that's, that is something that guys are, you know, uh, when a damsel in distress kind of situation, uh, when Real. They feel like, yeah, they're gonna, they, they want to help. And if a woman, yeah. And then that creates that attraction. It really does. You yeah. know, and, and the woman doesn't even have to be that spectacularly attractive. If she's vulnerable, isn't that they're like, Hey, here we yeah. are. We're with the knight, with the, with the hero. The yeah. Yeah. And let me add some women do not have to be weak and powerless to need a man. Mm. See, women used to have, they were, they were, if they're pregnant, they're powerless to go out and make money. They can't protect themselves. And that's a very feminine thing. You depend on him to protect you, provide for you and so forth. But women today are not, they have birth control. They're not pregnant all the time. They're not making great, caring for babies all the time. They're out making money. So what do they need you for? So suddenly you don't feel all turned on to them and they don't feel turned on to you because you've got, women have to feel I have a need and it's big. And then, and if he's there for me, I will produce more estrogen. Mm. And what is that need that women have today? And men have a, ver a male version of it as well. Once, once we get to a higher level of consciousness where I can be both masculine and feminine, and she can be both masculine and feminine, and that is the shift in your generation. Mm -hmm. You have that ability. That's why there's so much gender confusion. Mm -hmm. And my boy, my girl, what's happening? Because you can easily go back and forth. Now, because of my meditation for nine years before when I was a celibate monk, I, they did brain studies. I activate both parts of my brain at the same time. I learned that through meditation. You can see it in the meditation graphs and so forth. The both parts of my brain work at the same time. Well, the younger generation, that's happening more naturally without needing the meditation. It's just happening. But what that means is so that- an evolutionary thing? It's an evolutionary shift, yes. Oh. So I have greater access. So I did the work to have the evolutionary shift. But today, children are just born with that evolutionary shift. Every, evolu every generation, a little better, a little better. Mm -hmm. So what that means, it's a new potential, okay? You have a greater potential in life because it's the balancing of both the left and right hemispheres of the brain that creates genius, flow. You know, mm -hmm. we talk about flow state, which is timeless, which is unlimited energy, which is creativity, which is bringing in brilliance, all of that is balancing male female sides of the brain the left side is more the masculine energy the right side is more the feminine energy emotional intuitive expansive the left side is more about language and focus and analytical and non-personal and males are actually born with the left side there's something called the anterior parietal lobe and the left side for a man there's the right anterior parietal lobe the left anterior parietal lobe for every man born the left is bigger than the right. And for every woman born, the right is bigger than the left. Hmm. If you happen to be born a genius, they're the same size, which oh, means wow. that you can access more. So it also means that you have a higher risk of being schizophrenic and bipolar because you have genius potential. You're this way or that way. So you got more going on in your brain. So now having said all that, that we come back to the basics. If I can be on my female side, it's easier for me when I go out of balance. I'm a man, but it's easier for me to go to my female side than be on my male side. Mm, me too. You see, like the male side is strengthened by, look what I can do. Well, if, I, if I'm not paid for what I do and I don't feel confident, I can always go to my female mm. side and do what I love to do. Mm. Today, the symptom of men having too much female hormones is either 
anger, addiction, irritability, masturba excessive masturbation, and doing what feels good. Well, that doesn't feel good. I want to do what feels good. I'm going to watch game all day long. I'm going to play, 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 play. All that is estrogen producing productivity, doing that which is difficult for a noble cause. Like right now, how do I build my testosterone? Today I don't have to worry because I'm doing all my, my video talks, whatever. Mm -hmm. But when I'm sitting at home, I'm not out in the world doing stuff, driving my car, solving problem. Now what I'm doing is, okay, what is it around this house that I've been resisting? And that's decluttering, getting rid of clutter. You know, you got to go clean things, fix things, arrange things. Whatever I resist doing, normally I'm overcoming. Whenever you overcome your resistance to do something productive, that's your testosterone being produced. Oh, nice. So, so now I'm, and, you know, my exercise, right yeah. doing a, an intense exercise routine because I don't want to exercise. So it's not one of these people who go, oh, I can't wait to exercise. I hate exercise. Right. <laughs> so I overcome right. my tendency. Whenever you overcome resistance to doing something good for you, that pumps up testosterone. And nice. for women, whenever you overcome your resistance to loving, that pumps up estrogen. Trust me. You overcome your resistance to doing what you enjoy doing, because instead your brain goes, no, I have to do this first. I have to do this first. Hmm. That's going inhi to inhibit your production of progesterone. And when you say, oh, I can't depend on him. I can't ask him for help. I have to do it all myself. That's easier. You see, it's hard to ask somebody to, for something because they might go, no, I don't want to do that. Why do you do that? Or to ask them to move a box and they say, sure, I'll do that. And then they forget doing it, which you know is always going to happen. You ask men to do stuff, they forget. Because yeah. then remember doing the big stuff that makes money. <laughs> if we're stressed, we forget everything. So she gonna, why bother asking him? He's not going to do a good job anyway. Why bother asking him? He'll forget to do it. Why bother asking? He's going to be grumpy and that will hurt my feelings. Why mm. bother asking him? It's going to make him shift gears and he gets all grumpy when he does that. So I'm not going to bother. It's easier just to do it myself. All of that is your resistance to asking for and receiving. Receiving help is what women have to do. And men have to overcome their resistance to giving help. So this is hormones. This is like amazing when you get back to hormones. So I know our time's running out. I want to get some really practical suggestions for people that are living with somebody. Yeah. That, now, again, if you're alone and you're a woman, you need to be talking to people on the phone all the time sharing your feelings. If you're a man, you need to be doing more physical exercise. Playing games is okay, but you also have to do some things that are difficult, whatever that might be. Generally, working out is an important thing there or doing some kind of work that you can do at home that's a little bit more challenging for you. Mm. Okay, and also talking to other guys about what's going on. Talking with guys is cool because it also, just being around male energy increases your testosterone. For women, talking with women increases your estrogen. Just naturally, just being in that environment because you feel understood, you feel safe. You, what you do is gonna be accepted. Okay, so here's the super, super uh, new technique I'm teaching, it's not in my books, because oh, it's please. And please. you need to do it, particularly this time when you're cooped up. So okay. the way this game is called, it's a game, you know? And that's also part of balancing your hormones is playing games that require skill and discipline and effort, but also are fun, okay? The fun part of it. All right, so a genie in the bottle. Okay, that's what this is called. We're gonna play the genie in the bottle game. This is a couple, they're at home all the time, you know? So it's like for testosterone, when testosterone goes down, men need to pull away, they need space. And when estrogen goes down, women need to get close. So, so there's this battle going on. Right. When he pulls away, that's in Men Are From Mars, I wrote this, Men Are Like Rubber Bands. He needs to pull away, rebuild his testosterone. Now he can get close to you again. But then he gets close to you, his estrogen goes up, his testosterone goes down, he needs to pull away. So men are like back and forth, back and forth. Women are up and down, up and down. So we're always changing. So now how to give women what they need most, okay? When I go through our basic needs, primary needs in Men Are From Mars, I explain them also in Beyond Mars and Venus in more modern detail. But it's men particularly need to feel appreciated. That increases testosterone. They need to feel that what they do will be accepted. They won't be punished. They're going to be forgiven. They don't have to be perfect to be loved. Accepted, appreciated for what he can do, what he does do. And when he doesn't do it, to trust that maybe he'll learn to do it. Trust he has best intentions. Trust that he cares. Because sometimes a man does something wrong. She goes, see, I know I can never trust him again. And then they'll always remember that. He did that. He did that. That just pushes a man's testosterone down, down, down. So women 
men need those three primary emotions. Women need them too, but men need them more because we need more testosterone. Mm -hmm. Women need sh messages and behaviors from men, messages and behaviors from men that demonstrate we care. We're considerate of her. She's a priority. Messages and behaviors that demonstrate we understand. And there's nothing more powerful than that than getting a woman to talk without getting upset at her. You understand and you're there for her. The third one is the most important that's been missing for women, which is really the reason for the birth of the feminist movement. Besides, it is an evolutionary shift for women to become more masculine and men to have more fun in life, be more feminine, more loving. But the feminist movement, there's parts of it. See, I'm a feminist. I'm all for equality between men and women. But I don't buy into, to be equal, we have to be the same. Mm -hmm. That's a huge mistake. Then we'll just judge our partners for not being the way we are, not thinking the way we do, not doing the things we do. And we don't understand it. We just blame them rather than try to understand it from another perspective. So this is, so what, what happened is a long time ago, we invented money. And as soon as you have money, your value in life goes up depending upon how much money you have. Mm -hmm. And when you have money, when you make more money, you get more respect. So people respect you more. So women were doing a lot of jobs that, that you don't make a lot of money. So women don't get respect and women are missing their respect. And it turns out that when you respect someone, you produce estrogen in them. Okay. That's why Kings and Queens who got tremendous amount of respect are all crazy. They are, they're all like cuckoo. Read the history of these nutty English Kings, French Kings are fighting battles and whatever. And usually people, they say, you know, once you have super, super authority, you will always become dysfunctional. If you get too much respect and you're a man, you actually become too much estrogen. It's like when people do things for you, you start becoming selfish and you lose your selflessness. The part of you that's masculine is the serving part. Selflessness is pure masculinity. Selfishness with appreciation is pure femininity. Mm. What do I need and then appreciating what you get. And not always demanding perfection is part of learning how to uh, receive. See, receiving is I only appreciate you if you're perfect, as opposed to, oh, I see you made your effort. I see what you've done. I appreciate what's there. So this dynamic of respect is what really stimulates estrogen in women. So when my wife wants to talk, I respect her like I would respect my child who's crying in the night. I get up. I want to sleep, but I get up happily because I know my child needs it. That's what respect is, is the way you behave to somebody that has a need and you honor that need. That's one of the meanings of respect. That's what women need most. And they you haven't what, gotten it. What's, what's funny is that when you were mentioning the, the whole respect thing and how the, the royalties would go crazy cuckoo, I literally wrote a, 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 a blog recently, like yesterday, day before yesterday, and it's called La Corona, which means the crown. And it's infectious and it <laughs> literally show I, I want to share it with you because I think there's something we just touched something there that just kind of blew me away and yep. I'll send it to you uh, okay well, thank you'll get my email afterwards you can send yeah, it. it's a short read yeah. but it's a really cool oh, thing yeah, yeah. fun to read it so anyway so <laughs> yeah what women, what women need is to be honored and they're think about when you're most testosterone you're 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 asking a woman to marry you your heart is fully open you kneel before her that's what we do as men we kneel before the woman we honor her as a priority in our life and that fills her heart with love and then we don't get the love later so we stop kneeling and he stops kneeling so she doesn't have the love to give to him so it's a reciprocal dance so we have to learn women are not so complicated you don't have to uh, sacrifice your life for them although if necessary you do that and you become a hero but little things to honor her are just as important as big things. Consistent little things, four hugs a day, affection, touching her hair when you go into the house, when you see her in a room, acknowledging her. If you leave the room, you say, I'm gonna go to the restroom, be back in a little while, or I'm gonna go to sleep now. Just informing her where you are. That lowers her stress level. You're her protector. And deep inside, she needs to feel, I know where he is, he's here, he's not gone. Mm -hmm. So these are like subtleties. Little things make a big difference. Yeah. When it comes to estrogen, you can give a woman 24 roses and she goes, oh, and she'll glow. And, you, and a man thinks, okay, that's 24 points of estrogen. That should last a long time. No, you can give one rose and you'll get the same estrogen surge as 24 roses. 
the, the walk away there is lots of little things that respect femininity, fulfill the needs of the feminine, build up the estrogen so she can be happy for quite a while. It's the little things consistent. All right, so here's the new technique. Now that we understand little things make a big difference. Okay. So you're, you're stuck in the house. She's gonna start becoming needy. You're gonna be ignoring her because you need to be in your cave sometimes. And she's gonna go, why is he looking at me? Why is he attending to me? So you've gotta really fill her up. So how can you like really fill her up with her estrogen emotional needs? You say, she can say, or you can say that uh, she's, let's play the genie in a bottle game. Okay, what are the rules of the genie in the bottle? The man is the genie. Now you've seen the genie, they come out of the bottle and they're all powerful. You can do anything, you're Superman. What man doesn't wanna be a genie? Okay, I'm Superman. And what you're gonna do, you set a time limit, two hour uh, is for some couples. Uh, I like to do it every, every day for at least a couple hours. Uh, but you could do it every other day. Maybe some people do it every, every three days. So for two hours and for some three hours, uh, you, depending on how long you can last in intercourse, you can do longer. <laughs> a man's stamina can be measured by how long he can do intercourse. That's stamina. So that's testosterone levels, basically. So basically, you go two hours is going to be your, not two hours of intercourse, but two hours that you're going to play the game of genie in a bottle. So genie in a bottle is for two hours, you're gonna come out and you basically say to her, your wish is my command. And every request she makes, you say, as your wish, I love doing this for you. I enjoy doing this for you. What else can I do for you after you finish that task? Now this only goes for two hours. She can't ask you to do anything that will affect after those two hours. So you couldn't say, you know, I, I need you to clean out the garage tomorrow. I need to pick the kids up tomorrow. Nothing about tomorrow, it's just right now, for two hours, he is your genie whose only purpose is to serve you with a smile. And you can do this, men, if you know there's a time limit. And also, as she starts to experience within five minutes, she will start to really glow. It just feels so good. So these are some things she would do. She's, oh, honey, I'm feeling a little tired tonight. If she normally washes dishes, some women still do. And you say, would you wash the dishes? And he says, my wish, your wish is my command. I'd be happy to, I'd love to, honey. She always oh, so nice. And then he does that whole thing. Then what she does, she says, oh, you know, I'm sitting on the couch, relaxing now. And then you say, oh, would you bring me a cup of tea? Oh, certainly, honey, I'd be happy to give you. And you're lying on the couch and you're drinking your tea. So yeah, I think I wanna watch the TV for a few minutes. Would you hand me the remote control? Literally, you allow him to serve you in the most, you, you're just over, over heels that you've got a servant that will do whatever you want and you enjoy receiving, receiving, receiving. And that is enjoyable. That's your progesterone. And if you're in the estrogen land, massive amounts of estrogen. Cause see, that's really what romance is about. But this is more dramatic. Right. Uh, romance is to create estrogen in women by the man providing a date. He pays for it. He drives you, he organizes it, he does it, and he's supposed to know what you want. And, and the, the thing is women today have to learn, you have to inform him what you want, then he can do it. So in this two hour game, he's not allowed to do anything for you unless you ask. You can't expect him to do it automatically. So ideally you say, oh, let's, let's play the genie in the bottle game. And he can always, if she's not playing the game, you can say, hey, honey, whenever you want, I'm happy to play the genie in the bottle game. We can do that. we got two hours here. Let's do that. And even if there's kids around, you can say, oh, we'll do genie in the bottle. And she's telling you what to do for the kids. You know, she's the boss. She needs to feel she is the boss. And she can freely ask for what she wants. And then she has to practice receiving. You can't say, okay, take care of the kids. I'm going to go somewhere. That's another game. You can play that game too. That's called asking for what you want. But this is genie in the bottle. You have to see him doing these things and immediately feel a relief and a delight from it. So it's not like, oh, I've got to pay all the bills. Would you wash the dishes? No. Will you wash the dishes? Then will you help me pay the bills? You have to create space where you can feel, oh, he's doing something for me that normally he wouldn't do for me or something I need help with so that I can relax more. Okay, so that, that's the general gist of it. There could be many variations, right. but he gets to experience being able to say out loud, oh, I love doing this. This is such a pleasure for me. Within five minutes, it will be. And for her, her 
her heart will just begin to open like, oh, this is amazing. I like this game. Then you can extend it into the bedroom. Okay, because you could do three hours. So you've got two hours after dinner, whatever, or before dinner, asking them to make you dinner, whatever. Then what you do is in the bedroom, you oh, I think, honey, would you draw a bath for me? And, and he's drawing the bath. He said, now, would you take off my clothes for me as I get into the bath? Would you sit by the bath while I do this and brush my hair? I mean, these are silly things, but I'm telling you, brushing a woman's hair actually stimulates huge amounts of oxytocin. That's why women will pay $100 to have some barber wash their hair. Right. They want to feel the hair. If it feels so good, non-sexual touch, non-sexual uh, touch, yeah. huge estrogen stimulator until it goes higher. Then you say, oh, now, oh, none of my clothes are off. I'm taking a nice relaxing bath. Would you uh, give me a massage and, and dim the lights? Uh, then uh, put on some nice music. No, not that music. I would like this music. You are the boss. Then you can lie in the bed, you can do the massage. Oh, I think I'd like you to do this to me. Oh, I'd like you to do that to me. Oh, I want this a lot. You do this for me. Oh, guys will just love it. Okay, then they can do no wrong. All they have to do, and that's all very pleasurable. Then it can become sexual if she's sexual. Mm. If he's getting sexual too soon, she says, oh, not that yet, not yet, or not tonight. Uh -huh. I just want to feel That's your wish. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I sometimes I've had the best sex when she says, I'm not in the mood for sex at all. And then I do the non-sexual touch and then she gets in the mood. And then I feel like, yes, I did that. <laughs> and she'll even yeah. say, you did yeah. a good job. You really got me there. No, yeah. I, if you don't push for it, you'll get it sometimes. So this is oh. like um, good this, stuff. This helps to build a man's also like uh, his masculinity and his, 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 his testosterone by taking pride in his power to serve. Yes, yes, that's what it's about. Right. Taking pride in our power to serve. I love what you just said. And give it, and give it to God. I mean, always. You see, the thing about men yeah. is we, that's who we are. Yeah. But we don't get acknowledged for it. We don't get appreciated for it. Then we don't want to do it. Then it feels like we're weak. You know, we're being, we're, yeah. we're being controlled. We want to be serving what you need. You know, I remember reading something a long time ago that opened my eyes, which is, if you're a, a good, if you're a general in the army, all you're doing all the time is serving others. The higher you go is greater service to others and it's less about what you want, it's what other people want. That's greater power. Power is always increased inside of masculinity by having more responsibility for what other people need. But it's a training and this is like, helps us. I love what you said. It just trains them to take, what was it you said? Take responsibility. Take pride, pride in, the, in being able to serve. Power to serve. Take pride in being able to serve. Beautiful. Your power to serve as a man, mm -hmm. to your woman, to life, to every children, to life, to everything. To life, but take yeah. pride in it. It's yeah. learning service, and ultimately, uh, you know, for me, I'm a big meditator. I mentioned that uh, part of what you do if you're really good at meditation is you lose all sense of self. First, you find the first you find yourself, then you lose yourself, and then the God self comes through. Yeah. It's first uh, the soul comes in. And when the soul comes into the body, then you realize, well, this body is not me. That's me. The guy who's always been there, the eternal part of me. And when it comes in, then I'm not this body. So then there's this sense of humility and no self at all. And then at that point, then the God self can come through. And that's your genius. Right. Everybody's got genius. And it's not the same for everybody. It's who you are, your potential. And it comes out more and more and more. So life becomes a journey of personal growth. Yeah. Maslow called it self-actualization. It could be as a writer, for me, as, as a teacher, but also as a husband. A martial uh, artist. Was that? As a martial artist. Yes. Are you a martial okay. artist? Yes. 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 Oh, my gosh. And you know, when I, was, when I was 12 years old, I was in the front of martial artists magazines. That's my journey. I started out with martial artists. Uh, oh. You know, that's just, I was a little guy. My mother said, oh, I'll take these classes. And I really excelled at it, whatever. I think I've always liked having discipline. You know, that's yeah. part of my success is the discipline. And I had teachers. He was disciplined. You know, he worked us. It was like, it's not easy. I remember, you ever had to banging the wall? I mean, my fist going into this thing. My fingers would get blisters and everything. But you do what's tough. It does toughen you up. It doesn't mean you're not going to be loving. It actually means you can be more loving, but you also need role models, one. And two is you need love from a female. When a woman loves you, it softens you. 
And a lot of men who become dysfunctional didn't have a mother who was soft. So then you don't know what it's like to really feel loved by someone who thinks you're just, you know, mother's love and a wife's love can just be amazing. You are just, I'm so lucky to have you. You're precious, you're wonderful, but it's, it's reciprocal. Yeah. Women need to get that from us as well. We need to cherish women. And it's not so hard, it's built into the genes. A naked woman's body is spectacular. All the curves and everything, there's some kind of magic. Mm -hmm. And when people say there's no difference between men and women, I mean, a naked woman turns a man on. Does a naked man turn a woman on? No. <laughs> Here, honey, I'm gonna strip tease for you. Oh, you a laughing stock. <laughs> yeah, you know, I really appreciate the, the time. I mean, we went over our time, but I, God, you're so generous with your time and thank you so much. Oh. I really would love to have you again uh, sometime because there's some other things that I feel like we could elaborate on, like the martial arts aspect where uh, my, my, our fair, uh, our instructor, he's a Russian uh, martial artist. He actually teaches us to punch with love. That's beautiful. Oh, always, what I learned through martial yeah. artists, you never start a fight. You only fight to defend, never to hurt. Yeah, fight and this defend. guy has used to be uh, like in, in the Russian military during the Soviet Union, harder than hell. But when you see him go to work with such grace and fluidity and, yeah. and that's masculinity, balance, everything that you were well, talking about. You know, sometimes I talk about my relationship skills as Kung Fu relationship skills, <laughs> learning how to dodge. <laughs> See, a big part of martial arts is somebody punches, you got to move them. You got to move. Yeah. Wax on, yeah. wax off, you know. <laughs> and, yeah. and the woman is critical of you. And you go, okay, it's just a cloud in front of the sun. It will pass as long as I don't hit back. I don't hit back. Mm -hmm. And then you grab her and give her a hug. Yeah. So, <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> Martial arts and relationships. For, for everybody, uh, you can find out more about Dr. Gray um, on MarsVenus.com. Uh, yes, MarsVenus. And also my daughter is 32 and she speaks more to your generation. Oh, okay. uh, very popular on there with her blogs, uh, oh. her videos. She does like these video blogs on the website. And she um, also has a free course that I do with her for people about okay. how to get what you want in your relationships. It's there, it's free. Uh, we also have other online course courses. Completely free? Well. What is that? Like free free? Yeah, like free free. Yeah. <laughs> so be like no credit card free? <laughs> no credit card free. Oh no man, everybody's gonna free. go. <laughs> Let's go straight to it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, again, you know, Dr. Gray, John, oh, yeah. so yeah. amazing, so amazing. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you for your time and everything. Did you want to yeah. say anything before we take off? Uh, no, I just want to say thank you very much for the beautiful insight there was a couple times where i wanted to cry because it was so oh. beautiful <laughs> but i really do appreciate it and i'm pretty sure the audience out there would definitely appreciate every little thing that you had to say and take that into account and you know use that in their personal lives and their relationships we don't want to let you go can we stay like can we stay forever? <laughs> <laughs> let's do it again yeah. uh, make this tell you, what, thing. you know what we can do again is you can read your whole list of questions to me and then i'll just answer them all at once <laughs> okay perfect because <laughs> i know you had certain questions we didn't get to it my answers tend to be pretty long yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. My answers only make sense once you understand a bigger picture. Yeah. You can't just say, oh, man, you should talk, let women talk more than you. You yeah. can't just say, oh, women, if a guy's ignoring you, do something to make yourself happy and don't try to get him to come back. He'll come back when you're feeling happy. And yeah. These are like radical ideas, but they all make sense once you understand hormones, men and women's differences. differences yes, absolutely. Yeah. Again, no. all right, awesome. We're going to keep in it touch with perfect. you and we'll talk okay. soon. We will. Thank we will. You. Thank you. And stay safe. Lots of love. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.